All right, case four. We got a 60-year-old man with a leg mass. Lots of myxoid here. So there are adipocytes in there. And I think that these are probably actually background fat with myxoid stuff in between. Yeah. Sometimes a problem in soft tissue pathology, particularly with fat, is it's really hard sometimes to tell if fat is part of the tumor yeah. or if fat is being entrapped by the tumor. And I, there are certainly many times where I still struggle with that and think, well, it's hard to be sure sometimes. But here I think that... Fat is not a part of I think in this case, I think the fat is trapped and kind of yeah. infiltrated by the myxoid stuff. I thought it's like a myxofibrosite. Well, that's exactly what it is. Good job. You've got myxoid, very infiltrative growth. And if we go look around, even though it's not super ugly from low power, it's very hypocellular. When we look around, we begin seeing scattered, hyperchromatic, atypical cells. So there is atypia here. And by definition, to make a diagnosis of myxofibrosarcoma, I'm trying to get it in focus here, you have to have at least some atypia. Like you need to have some hyperchromatic hyperchromatic atypical cells or pleomorphic cells scattered in the myxoid background, usually with these kind of prominent elongated vessels, like we're kind of starting to see right here. You get these long vessels that people call curvilinear. They're kind of these long vessels that snake through the myxoid background. And then in the midst of that, you have these scattered pleomorphic cells. So when it's very low cellularity like this and you just have the scattered pleomorphic cells, I would call that a grade one myxofibrosarcoma. You could also say low-grade myxofibrosarcoma, but I don't like to do that because it sounds a lot like low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma, which of course is totally unrelated. And if any of you out there are frustrated by those very confusing names, I'm with you. I understand that it's frustrating. And I actually have a short video on my YouTube channel that shows how to differentiate myxofibrosarcoma from low-grade fibromyxoid sarcoma pretty easily. But this is a very good example of myxofibrosarcoma, which, which has pleomorphism, must have pleomorphism. So myxoid backgrounds, prominent kind of curving, elongated vessels, scattered pleomorphic cells. As it begins to get higher grade, as it gets into grade two, I don't have an example right here, but the cells will start to clump and cluster together along the vessels. And then grade three will have sheets of stuff that looks like high-grade sarcoma, like UPS. It'll have solid areas that look like that, and then other areas that'll be loose in myxoid. And the important thing to remember about myxofibrosarcoma is, number one, it is actually relatively common as sarcomas go. I mean, all sarcomas are rare, but this is much more common than, than many of the other types of sarcoma. I, I see this regularly, you know, sometimes several times a month, um, I may see myxofibrosarcoma. It usually is on the extremities of elderly people, and about half of the time, it arises above the fascia. That means in the dermis or subcutis. So it'll show up in, in derm path and in other areas where people are maybe not expecting to have a sarcoma. It can, it can grow in the deep muscles too, but it, uh, but it has this tendency to involve the skin. And many sarcomas are, are grow and push everything out of the way, but this is a sarcoma that's very infiltrative. It oozes with all that gooey myxoid blue background. It oozes in between. So you can see it here getting in between some fascia and there's some sweat coils down there. It's growing and oozing in between and it spreads along the subcutaneous septa, spreads along the fascia. And because of that, the surgeons, even experienced sarcoma surgeons, sometimes really have trouble clearing this tumor. They'll cut way around the mass and the margins will still be positive. So because of that, it has a high rate of local recurrence. And even though this grade one, the very low grade ones, they do not usually metastasize, but when they recur, they can become higher grade over time. And then once they're higher grade, they can metastasize. So again, just the scattered pleomorphism in the background and all of the myxoid change. Oh, that was the one other thing I was going to show is they have these bubbly cells like this. Yes, these are pseudolipoblasts. They have vacuoles, but the vacuoles are not like the nice sharp circumscribed ones like we saw in the true pleomorphic lipoblast. And also, even though it's a little hard to tell, it washes out a little on the video recording. It's got a little bit of bluish color in the middle rather than clear or white space. It's the same color as this background, and that's because this is a tumor cell that has sucked up that hyaluronic acid myxoid background. And here's another one over here. Here's another one down here. And this is a common thing. You can see it in other sarcomas with myxoid change, but it's particularly characteristic of myxofibrosarcoma. And I think I even saw if I recall over here earlier, I saw a better one and then I got distracted talking about vessels or something and forgot to point it out. Well, that one was good enough.
but yeah, um, uh, pseudo lipoblasts is a common finding in um, in myxofibrous sarcoma. So good, important uh, sarcoma to be aware of. And no, uh, unfortunately, no specific immunostain pattern here. It's pretty much based on on just the appearance of it and the clinical situation. And some other tumors, like, like for example, liposarcomas can have myxofibrous sarcoma-like areas, like pleomorphic liposarcoma can have myxoid areas that look just very similar to that. DDIP liposarc can do the same thing. So there are other tumors that can sometimes mimic this um, as well. 